guilds and organizations, player to player selling, mission rewards and so on are all amazing features that Star Citizen still doesn't have, even 10 years on. And so with Star Citizen's first iteration of server meshing literally just around the corner, it may be soon that we start to very sorely miss some of these basic features. And so in this video, I've distilled for you five core features that I think are important to any good MMO that Star Citizen desperately needs to get into the game as soon as possible. Of course though, as is with any video on YouTube, it's just my opinion, and so I'm sure that you guys will have your own ideas, which I encourage you to share down in the comments section below. However, while you don't have a choice for what features are missing from Star Citizen, you do have a choice for what features are missing from your computer security, like NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video and somebody who helps make videos like these possible. They now not only help hide your IP from prying eyes, but go a step further with their new threat protection service. It works against intrusive ads, malware trackers, and malicious websites, and I've already personally used them for years after getting fed up with dealing with free VPNs that just didn't work. So I can now access IP restricted websites while I work from abroad. I also use the app on my iPad to let me watch shows like Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which for some reason is still not available here in Taiwan frustratingly. So if you're looking for a reliable VPN service and you want to help support the channel, head on over to nordvpn.com morphologist to get a huge discount on a two-year plan plus get an additional month for free. Oh, and if none of this is really for you, then you can always get your money back with their 30-day money back guarantee. So to be clear here, there are clearly many missing features from Star Citizen, and that's no secret if you've been following the project. It's been in development for 10 years, and they're also working on a game called Squadron 42, which is essentially a black box of development that we know nothing about. So I'm not trying to be very critical of the project here, though it is critical. I'm more trying to lend some insight into what I think is really important and core to a good MMO that Star Citizen really needs to get into the game, considering that we're about to have a huge multiplayer environment. But it should again go without saying that many of these features are from my own personal list and opinion, so I encourage you guys to share down below what you think is most important to you, because I want to have that kind of conversation down in the comment section below. I really do enjoy talking to you guys about Star Citizen, even off stream and off my YouTube videos on my Discord, so please don't be afraid to get involved in a civil conversation down below. The first I'd like to talk about is a really big one, and it's one that I consider to be one of the most important core features to any good MMO, and it's one that is missing from Star Citizen in any practical sense. Some games call them guilds, others call them clans, and in Star Citizen they're called organizations, but whatever the name the developers choose, they all serve the same purpose and come with a similar feature set. They bring together and help organize similarly minded members of a game's community, sometimes under a common cause or purpose such as for PvP, new player help, or even to just help people who run out of fuel. Looking at you fuel rats from the Elite Dangerous, good work guys. And they in many ways can alter the way a game's community perceives the members of those guilds. And they can even go so far as to create legends in the community and even alter or augment the way a game is perceived. Think of EVE Online without Goonswarm. Love them or hate them, they've really shaped the landscape of how EVE is perceived by the general public and the player base. More importantly and practically though, the associated tool sets with the guild feature can be pivotal in fostering the good health of a game's community. Guild halls and chats can create a place for the virtual self to congregate with one's community. It's where members can find assistance on difficult missions, gain insight into difficult parts of the game's mechanics, and importantly, enable the creation of lasting friendships that in turn can create a sense of belonging. Features like guild coffers can also assist members financially during large events or wars, or even on a smaller scale to be able to help out new members or players to get their first ship or item. They enable the community to pool its resources for the betterment of each of its members, further encouraging the development of a healthy community that helps its members and supports the game as a whole. Guild identifiers such as tags or unique clothing, paint, or guild armor also help give its members identity within the larger community, which is also an important psychological factor in making an MMO successful on a personal level. All of these are sorely missing from Star Citizen. I mean, imagine if you will, an organization inventory where resources could be stored and distributed for large events at ease. Imagine if organization money could be pooled to make 
a large ship purchase in-game. For example, like you want to buy a javelin together with the rest of your org to serve as your organization's home space base. Imagine if you had a place to ask for help in that Idris mission in-game so that members could jump to you and help you complete it. While the Spectrum forums certainly can help somewhat, most people aren't going onto the website to interact with the rest of the community. They're doing it through in-game chat or not at all. Doing this would encourage the creation of a more healthy community in my view, and it's why I think this is one of the most important missing features that we still need to have in Star Citizen. And I just want to tag this one on here, I'd also like to see guild livelry so that we can apply ship paints that matches our guild in game so you can identify us as separate from other people in the general star citizen populace. Another core feature of many MMOs is the ability to sell items to other players through some form of in-game marketplace. For some, that comes in the form of deployable kiosks. Others like WoW have dedicated auction halls where players can bid for player submitted items. Whatever their form, they help create a player-driven economy that can bring value to otherwise valueless items. Think for example on the new rare ancient artifacts that can be found at the Derelict Outposts in 317.2. Without an in-game marketplace, it's difficult to assess what the going rate for those objects are, or for someone seeking to buy them to even find somebody who's selling it. While forums and websites can help, the vast majority of players, again, are only going to be looking to the in-game environment and features to find things like this because, honestly, it's hard to trust people outside the game and transactions that take place outside the game. Theme park mission sets are a chain of missions driven heavily by story elements that a player is tasked with completing. In many cases, it involves many different mission givers who are all somehow involved together in lore in some way. Memorable examples in other games for me include places like Jabba's Palace from Star Wars Galaxy. There you start off by working your way up through the seedy underworld, doing odd jobs for some of Jabba's underlings. All of which builds to you gaining enough respect and notoriety to be able to gain audience with Jabba himself where he would personally give you a mission that is much higher stakes and much higher paying, typically rewarding you with some unique item. These types of missions give players, like me, the sense of being part of a bigger universe and story, where we're at the center as the story's protagonist. Experiences like these stay with me even to this day, demonstrating its impact on developing the fondness for a game's title and universe. Imagine what kind of connection you would feel to the universe of Star Citizen, and how immersed you would be if in order to talk to someone like Twitch in Area 18, the leader of a, a gang, you would need to do a series of missions for her underlings in order to gain her trust, all of which would be paid off in an epic mission that she gives you to hijack, for example, a UEE capital ship. In virtually every MMO that I've ever played, missions and milestones like passing a certain level often come with a reward of not just in-game currency, but a unique item as well. These serves as totems of achievement that display an individual's prowess or status. Further, and as a result, they become the objects of great desire for other gamers to strive for, especially in cases where the triggering milestone or mission can only be achieved through some great difficulty. I hope it's not becoming too tiresome, but thinking back on Star Wars Galaxies again, I remember the Bane's Heart lightsaber crystal that you could get on Kashyyyk. There was a series of missions that you would have to go through before you'd be able to get down to fight this main boss, and I kind of am fuzzy on the details, but I do remember that they had a chance to drop this super rare lightsaber crystal. If you got it, it had really interesting unique attributes and had a unique color, and anybody who had it could show off that they had something super unique that you really couldn't buy anywhere else. And so it really pushed a lot of members of the community to work together to try to get one for themselves. Applying this to Star Citizen, imagine if you finally achieved Master Bounty Hunter on your reputation bar, and you unlocked a unique set of armor and a shipskin for your favorite ship to broadcast your mastery of the art. And finally, one of my favorite missing features is player and guild housing. Having a place to call home can be important for many reasons for a player. For some, it's simply for the immersion of having a place to return to after a hard day of grinding out your next level. For others, it's a place to store valuable items for future adventures. For me, it was one of the places that I could use to store valuable objects and display them for friends when we would gather for social events or for to do a, like a really cool mission together. It offers a place 
for us to regale stories of old of our past adventures. Imagine, for example, being able to display that rare artifact you found on Microtech for your friends to ogle over, or perhaps a place to display that unique weapon that triggers a memory for you that you had with a bunch of your guildmates last year. And lastly, I know I said I'd do five, but I gotta get this one in here as an honorary mention because it's partially in the game, but not really fully there yet. And that's player customization, but for ships. While it may seem intellectually insignificant and has no real practical gameplay implication, it can be one of the most psychologically important features that a game can have. It enables the ability for players to establish their own unique identity or to be able to express an identity that they wish to share with others. And so in my view, it's core to any good MMO feature set and one that Star Citizen really could improve. While Star Citizen has a huge variety of player armor and clothing to choose from in game, which is why this is an honorary mention, a large component of a player's identity in Star Citizen is in the ship that they fly. In recent years, we've been able to get a slow drip of new skins for various ships in Star Citizen. However, there still exists a huge amount of ships that still don't have skins, and for those who have them, there just aren't that many choices. And beyond the paint of one ship, there's nothing that a player can really do to change the form of a ship or its interior. None of that is changeable, and so we're really left with ships that tend to feel pretty basic, evoking little emotional attachment between players and their ships. Imagine, if you will, a future where your ship is like the Millennium Falcon, a bit rubbish looking, but it's packed with full custom parts that make it faster than people expect. Imagine augmenting the exterior to give it a really cool looking engine or something like that, and giving it a unique paint scheme that's really you. And then on the interior, it's decorated in the way that you want, with some trophies of your past bounty hunting experiences. Or imagine you have a dark side and you just want to display the corpses of your enemy ships that you've destroyed on your hull. It's a bit stretching it, but I mean, it would be kind of cool to like be a reaver in Star Citizen on an alt account. I don't know, it's kind of fun to do stuff like that. And I should also mention here that player face and body customization along with the player's hair is also in sore need of some love. But I digress because this is a rabbit hole that I could keep going down for hours. Now there are many more core features that I really didn't mention here, some more minor and some more major, and each of you are likely to see something a little bit different as you play Star Citizen differently. And so, as I said at the beginning more than once, I want you guys to share down below what you agree with in this video and what you disagree with and what things you wish you saw on the list. And of course, if you like this video and you think I did a good job, you know what to do. Hope to see you guys next time.